Hello, uh, welcome to another of our digital slide review sessions. Uh, this uh, part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. I'm Dr. Lewis Hostel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Uh, our case today is from the realm of uh, GYN pathology um, and uh, concerns that of a uh, 20, 30, 32 year old woman who is pregnant. And uh, during the course of pregnancy, she notes that she has a vaginal mass that has increased in size. So this raises an interesting clinical problem. What are the lesions uh, associated with pregnancy that may uh, uh, cross the pathologist's desk? Well, first of all, there are a number of skin-related conditions that uh, occur primarily in pregnancy. The, the so-called PUP lesion, the pruritic urticarial paps and plaques of pregnancy. Uh, there's also perigo that can become uh, predominant during pregnancy and various pemphigoid uh, lesions that uh, go into the rubric of pemphigoid gestationis. In addition, uh, stria and melasmas may also occur. Uh, there are also a number of uh, pre-existing tumors that may be accentuated or uh, enhanced by the uh, uh, um, hormonal state that is associated with pregnancy and specifically uh, a number of tumors like meningioma, breast cancer, and melanoma come to mind. Uh, pituitary tumors uh, also are uh, occasionally seen in this setting. Um, and uh, also, uh, of course, various gestational neoplasms would be uh, impacted by hormonal uh, lesions. So uh, if you're thinking, uh, could this be uh, one of these uh, lesions, meningioma? Well, probably not in the, in the vaginal setting, setting but uh, breast cancer or melanoma certainly uh, might be in the differential. So uh, the lesion was uh, excised um, and it was rather a bulky, several sonometer type lesion with a sort of uh, undulating uh, folded surface and a very prominent uh, loose uh, vascularized stroma a uh, few larger vessels down at the base. Um, of course, uh, it looks here as though the uh, epithelium is not really uh, particularly remarkable. <clears throat> this doesn't look like a warty lesion. Uh, there's no hyperplasia, although there is a little bit of papillomatosis. Uh, that's not uh, striking. Uh, looking then more closely at the stroma, we see here the uh, very loose pattern uh, delicate uh, thin walled vessels uh, branching. Uh, and we begin to see that there are a number of uh, other cells in the stroma that begin to stand out. Um, and as we uh, hone in on these, we notice that uh, some of these are a little bit on the atypical side. Uh, there are, uh, are variable multinucleate uh, cells, some smudging and uh, variable sized uh, nuclei uh, in uh, some of these cells. They have a uh, not really, well, maybe a little bit stellate type of uh, pattern, uh, a little vacuole or uh, change in a few of the cytoplasmic uh, areas. Uh, and in the background, there may be some uh, mast cells seen as well. Um, the uh, surrounding stroma is a very loose, uh, fibrillar, collagenous type stroma that is not particularly remarkable. Uh, we can uh, scan over this and see that uh, this is uh, pretty well much the entire uh, appearance of this um, uh, lesion uh, throughout its course. Uh, we don't see areas of increased cellularity. Uh, mitotic activity is not evident. Um, and uh, so uh, this is a lesion that uh, uh, could go just under the rubric of fibroepithelial polyp. However, these stromal cells are distinctive um, and tend to be uh, inclined more towards the uh, uh, gynecologic tract. Um, so uh, while uh, they are just modestly atypical in a few areas, uh, they don't have the sarcomatous appearance that you might think of uh, for more aggressive lesions. Um, they are distinctive from, say, uh, the uh, angiomyxomas or other type of uh, more potentially clinically aggressive lesions that can occur here. So this uh, falls into the category of a fibroepithelial stromal polyp, uh, which is a defined entity that occurs in uh, youth and young adulthood 
that may be associated with pregnancy or the onset of hormonal therapy. And the location is typically uh, found in the vagina or vulva. Um, but unlike uh, aggressive angiomyxoma and melanoma and so forth, these are not aggressive lesions, uh, despite the occasional sarcomatoid appearance of these uh, uh, stromal uh, cells. And what, what may also be seen is occasional mitoses. Uh, these tend to be positive, of course, for uh, stromal markers. Uh, Desmond can sometimes be seen in these cells, which is uh, unusual because they don't really appear muscular. Um, and they will usually be a hormone uh, receptor positive, as you might expect. Now, just uh, as a matter of comparison, uh, here is a, uh, a fibroepithelial polyp from a different area of the urogenital tract. Uh, this is a uh, fibroepithelial polyp of the bladder. And so here we can see that the epithelial component is much more uh, predominant uh, in this location. Um, and we don't have the distinct, distinctive, uh, somewhat atypical or bizarre stromal cells that we saw in the vulvovaginal uh, stromal polyps. So just to compare, going back to our initial slide, um, <clears throat> well, actually, this is another section from the same lesion. Uh, loose, delicate vasculature, um, loose fibrous stroma, occasional bizarre or multinucleate cells. Uh, that are hormone receptor positive uh, characterize this lesion. Um, so our final diagnosis on today's case is fibroepithelial stromal polyp with bizarre stromal cells uh, occurring in a pregnant uh, young woman. Well, uh, that summarizes today's case. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have questions or comments, please uh, make, make them in the uh, comment section below or reach out to me directly at one of these uh, sites. And, and as uh, usual, we certainly hope that you'll subscribe as we plan to continue to release uh, interesting uh, uh, videos uh, uh, covering topics in GYN, GI, and other areas of surgical pathology. So until next time, thanks so much uh, for joining us.